how we do the uh, composting. Is composting the, the major method we get rid of the carcasses? In Minnesota, that has been our primary disposal. In Wisconsin, they're doing uh, semi-burial, so mm-hmm. they're digging shallow pit right. and then composting on top. But here in Minnesota, again, with our floor-raised birds, we've been primarily yeah. composting. Our carbon sources are have not necessarily been a challenge. Okay. I'm um, going to ask you about that because I saw so many beautiful trees. We here. have a lot of trees. Yeah. We have a fair amount of other livestock that we can use their compost for capping a compost pile. Our biggest challenge, yes. to be honest, was our our number of, number of subject matter experts. We only had two in the state, and USDA required that a subject matter expert be monitoring each compost pile. Uh-huh. But when we have 50 piles right. simultaneously, yeah. then that became a challenge. Um, and so we actually, earlier in June of this year, mm-hmm. um, have had a training to train more subject matter experts in the state. But to back up, you know, we have lots of carbon source availability. We have plenty of the wood chips to be able to to start our, our base of the compost pile. We That's have... Great. Lots of shavings, mm-hmm. uh, pine shavings off mm-hmm. mostly, and then our manure and our compost to cap the pile. That's that's amazing. So yeah. usually, is there like a logistically how far away when you gather those compost from like a dairy farm or from a wood shaving storage? Are those are those your concerns? I wish I knew more about those logistics. I know of a few contracted companies yeah. that are, they like, they have land tree, uh-huh. land clearing companies, uh-huh. or they sell bedding to our turkey producers uh-huh. regularly. Okay. And so they are already kind of, those businesses are already used to trucking across the state, Got things like that. And they have their drivers and they have flexibility of where they can be Got when. So scheduling, I think, is probably pretty much where we need to be. Okay. But as far as logistics, I, you know, I'm not quite certain when we have farms in the very northern part of Minnesota yeah, that are affected, yeah. then they will probably have to use locally Local, sourced. And yeah. I do know that the USDA caseworkers prefer to use locally sourced. Right. So in northern Minnesota, we did have a farm that they were using straw mm-hmm. as, as their carbon source, mm-hmm. which we, because that was there, mm-hmm. they looked at using sunflower hulls. Not a very effective carbon source, right. but it's what was available. Exactly. Sometimes we have to pick what we have. In northern Minnesota, they're one of our satellite campuses in Crookston. They're actually using wild rice knuckles, is what it's called. It's a byproduct of wild rice. Uh-huh. They're using it as a bedding material. Okay. So they're starting to research that. So is that maybe a potential that we could use as a carbon source down the road for composting? All of those things are... We still need to, we need to learn more, right. but the materials are vast here. We could use corn stover. We could use soybean mm-hmm. chaff. There's lots of materials locally that we could mm-hmm. source, but maybe we just don't know a lot about it yet. Gotcha. That's a great information. I think we can for sure learn a lot from you and from other states. Maybe in the future, we can build a map to show our producers where is the nearest the carbon source for them. So, yeah. And I think our Minnesota Department of Agriculture actually has a listing online. Okay. Maybe of, we can put this. Of people who can yes. provide some of those materials and those contract goods just so people can find them because they might not know locally. Okay. So the links will be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes.